So we'll look at Thorbjorn's goal swing and Trapman numbers. Obviously, they're probably the most recent winner. Um, this has been filmed, if you like, or I'm just recording this data just after he won the European Tour event last week. So massive congratulations. And uh, looking at his goal swing, it's, uh, it's easy to see how he would be a winner. Um, let's have a look at a few of the numbers, first of all, the Trapman side of things. So, you know, good speed, good angle of attack, path under two degrees, which is great. A little bit of a difference between the path and face which would normally create a shot that would start pretty straight to target and then curve and finish right of target. However, if we look at this spin axis over on the right hand side of the screen here, you'll see that the spin axis is fairly neutral. Um, generally, that would be caused by an off-center hit. You know, I'm talking marginally off the toe of the club here that will reduce the amount of cut spin from the gear effect in the club. You've got great ball speed. You've got um, a good launch angle, good spin rate. Swing planes lower than we see with some of the tall players, uh, but again, a lot of good players will tend to be lower rather than higher. So again, tour average in the swing plane number there would be normally about 60 degrees, but you tend to see a few of the very good players uh, that will return it just under that figure. And obviously very good distance, a carry of 181 and a total distance of 190. So pretty much matching all the other tall players you'd look at, uh, but I, I particularly like the way he moves. So... Posturally wise, we look at him as just a little bit of kind of C shape in his body here, which is one of the things I'd look at, and his right shoulder sits a little bit forward. But apart from that, a nice kind of comfortable athletic looking posture from down the line view. From the face on view, for me, I'd like to see his tailbone or his pelvis go a little bit more towards target. For me, it sits a little bit uh, too much in line with his upper body. I'd like to see it slightly ahead of that to allow him to rotate and load his backswing up nicely and create that kind of nice lead power in the downswing. He does a good job of that, by the way, so he makes up for that even though he's not set in kind of my perfect model. Then if we look at how he kind of moves into the into the backswing here, he, he tends to move the golf club very nicely. It's fractionally, fractionally inside, and it's fractionally, fractionally right arm kind of fixed, I'd say, rather than folded. Um, so again, my preference would be letting the arm fold a little bit more and let that club sit upright a little bit more onto that kind of yellow line if you look down the line. And he moves to the top of the golf swing. For me, he does a very, very good job. He tends to turn nicely, gets nice width with the arms. The plane is pretty good from the point of view of his arm position. It's fractionally, fractionally cross-lined. I know it's not a perfect camera angle, uh, but it's fractionally, fractionally cross-lined, I would say, which then leads him then to just start the golf club down in the fashion he does. So he starts down a little bit from the inside, and at the bottom he rotates beautifully with his body for me. He just really opens up his body really nicely as we get into this kind of impact position there. And his footwork is very, very good. Also, if we look from face on, what we'll see there is his little hip action. His hips move forward towards target and raise his left hip particularly. So he gets a nice alignment between his right and left hip here, which is great for me. And the head returns to exactly the start position it was in. So for me, he's moving his hips and lower body very effectively. We'll just see here as the club sort of enters into the ball there, you'll see it's a slight, slight toe contact, which is what we talked about earlier with the spin axis, but otherwise very effective and efficient movement. Um, as he exits the goal swing, for me, does a great job. Uh, the only thing I'd comment on probably long term would be the fact that the left wrist is slightly, slightly cupped in post-impact. That will affect the club face control, and you might find he has a variant in his club face data. Obviously, this is one swing we're looking at, not a multitude of swings. But very, very good movement of the golf club for me through the golf swing. There are a few things that you might address. But again, as I say, a lot of times when we look at these elite players, the only times you'd address them is after collecting sufficient evidence. What happens under pressure? How often do we see the bad shots? Is it worth the change? Or indeed, what is the biggest change we can do, or the smallest change we can do for the biggest gain? And this is a snapshot look at his golf swing, and it's very, very impressive. Um, he could probably produce more speed going forward if he made some of the changes we've suggested by moving his arms a little bit more efficiently and his wrist action a little bit more efficiently. But, hey, there's a lot there to love. No wonder he won. Hope you enjoyed the swing review. And uh, if you do, make sure you check out my playlist on tour player and European tour players swing reviews. And make sure you subscribe and post any comments down below.